How do you do a systematic literature research? Prepare the current state of research. Develop the theoretical background. Derive your research hypotheses. We'll go over that in this video. Let's start. What is the goal of the literature research? The goal of the literature research is to describe the current state of research, to develop the theoretical background of the thesis and to derive the research hypotheses. Note, before you start your literature research, find out what is expected from your university or your supervisor. How comprehensive does your literature section need to be? What databases are important in your field? How should you present the literature research in your thesis? It is important that your literature search is not the result of random finds, but that you are as focused as possible in your search. The best way is to go through the following five steps. Find search terms, query databases, pyramid scheme search, review literature, get literature. Find search terms. Once you have chosen your topic and narrowed down your research problem, the first thing you need is good keywords. For this, create a list of possible keywords. Query databases. It's great if you can find as many journal articles and books about your topic as possible. These are found in electronic form in literature databases. Pyramid scheme search. Besides doing your own search, there is another way you can quickly get useful literature sources. To do this, just look at the bibliographies of other theses or journal articles in your research area. In this way, you will move forward faster and be in the right area from the start. However, it is important that you get an idea of the literature sources yourself and do not simply blindly copy them. Review literature. Now you need to filter out the useful sources from your results list. Since you want to finish your thesis at some point, you obviously can't read all sources. So the best thing you can do is simply get an overview of the individual literature and then decide which one is worth reading in more detail. For this you can, for example, read the abstracts, which are short summaries. Get literature. Finally, you need to get the full texts of the selected sources. Of course, you can find most full texts on the internet, hopefully free of charge and not behind a paywall. Sometimes it is a requirement of the university to present the systematic literature research in the form of a flowchart. If you want to present your literature search in a flowchart, you can do it as follows. Identification. At the top you note the number of studies you found. Screening. Then the number of studies you took a look at, for example, read the abstract. Rating. Now the studies that you have completely gone through. And finally, the number of studies that you use in your work and which therefore also appear in your bibliography. Now we know how a systematic literature review is done and we can move on to discuss what to include in the literature section. State of research, theories, hypotheses. Let's start with the state of research. In the state of research section, you summarize the most important research findings from the literature on your topic. In doing so, you should address the following points. How has research changed in recent years? What is the current state of research? What is the direction of research right now? And how does your work fit into the state of research? You can present the state of research either thematically or chronologically. If you proceed thematically, you sort the studies according to their contents. If you proceed chronologically, you sort the studies by the year of publication. The second part of the literature review is 
to find the needed theories that you will refer to in your quantitative thesis. You should select one or more scientific theories that are appropriate to your research topic. But what are theories? In quantitative research you examine a small section of reality. Although it is only a small section of reality, this small section is usually very complex. Therefore, an attempt is made to establish statements or theories that are free of contradictions. So, reality is very complex, therefore simplified theories. You can then derive your hypotheses from the theories. The hypotheses are then formulated in such a way that they can be tested using collected data. Of course, theories have to be formulated first, but this is rather the task of qualitative research. Qualitative research tries to develop a theory on the basis of collected data or observations. This is then an inductive procedure. In reality, observed patterns are generalized. Quantitative research can then be used to test existing theories using observations. This is then a deductive procedure. The question then is, does the theory agree with the observed results? Short summary. The complex reality is explained with the help of theories. You now want to test these theories with the help of hypotheses. To do this, you collect quantitative data and analyze them. Finally, you can interpret the results. This knowledge can then be used to improve the theories or create new ones. So all knowledge that is gained from reality is collected in theories. After you have found the theories you want to use, you can start formulating your hypotheses. An example. Let's say your topic is working conditions and health. To start your search, you create a list of search terms and conduct a literature search. For example, you search for the following terms, job stress, workloads, workplace health and so on. At the end of your search, you have a list of quite a lot of studies that you want to use for your thesis and you write down the state of research. The theory you decide to use is the Model of Effort-Reward Imbalance by Johannes Seacrest. What is the content of the theory? It is a theory about the effects of stressful working conditions on the mental health of employees. A mismatch between effort and rewards leads to a higher stress level and to poorer mental health of working people. From the theory you now derive the general hypothesis, the more job-related rewards like good pay, appreciation and so on employees receive, the better their mental health. You want to analyze this hypothesis as good as possible, so you turn it into two hypotheses. The more appreciation employees receive, the better they rate their mental health and the more dissatisfied employees are with their pay, the worse they rate their mental health. Now you just need to use the literature to figure out the best way to measure appreciation received, mental health or satisfaction with pay. Then you create a questionnaire and use a survey to ask your target audience. You can then analyze the collected data, for example, with the help of a correlation analysis. More on the topic of hypotheses and hypothesis testing in the following video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.